The chronic ills of the nation's health system often present first at hospital emergency departments, where long queues and long hours add, extreme, or add to extreme stress and pressure on medical staff. It's long been seen as a rite of passage for doctors and nurses working very long shifts while solving sometimes complex cases and bearing the brunt of patients' emotional distress. But the relentless demands of the job drive many medics to alleviate their work-related stress and anxiety by self-medicating and struggling on. One study in America has found that some 20% of medical residents in hospitals suffered clinical depression. Kirsten Murray and a 7.30 report crew were granted access to an emergency department for 24 hours to film just one doctor at work to illustrate the intensity of events in a typical emergency ward where any case can happen and all too frequently does. And I should warn, some viewers may find some of the images in this story distressing. Yeah, good evening. My name's Peter Worth. I'm an emergency physician at Mildura. So you are very, very sick, OK? How long have you had to stay again? How happy are you to do it without surgical backup? 85 lifting a motorbike. <laughs> On duty in this regional Victorian public hospital is emergency physician Peter Worth. Tonight, he's overseeing the care of 26 patients. You know, we have to be honest, the worst outcome could be that it does actually cause a leak. The average shift is 10 hours, and what can happen in a 10-hour shift can be horrendously busy. But, I mean, it could rupture the... It's very unlikely. There's no tap on and off taps. We have very little warning and no control over what's coming through the doors. So he walked into a campfire, did he? Yeah, was... Now we do take burns to feet fairly seriously because there's always potential risk of scarring. Yeah. But if we put her in a full zimmer, she can go home. Okay, okay I'll go and tell her. Mrs. Blanthorne. Mrs. Blanthorne, we've, we've done some blood tests. If we get them back in the next little while, and they're all normal, we'll let you go home with a proper splint. Stress has just hit me, I'm afraid. It's right, it's okay, it's okay. In this ward, every bed is full. Cases are backing up in corridors, but tonight is no different from any other. Sorry, where are you from? This isn't chaotic, this is actually quite calm for us. We never use the word quiet, never. It's a jinx. For those doing the rounds, it's a demanding, stressful job. And sometimes the pressure can take its toll. Now the health of health workers is under focus after a Beyond Blue study found suicide rates among medical practitioners could be twice that of the general population. In my first 11 years, I had 11 colleagues kill themselves. If you're already fragile, if your bucket's already full, then you know it doesn't take much. Things that you would normally cope with in a normal day-to-day -day situation can become um, even more uh, overwhelming. Trust me, six mils, yep. which is the correct dose. I'll take responsibility for that. We'll go and give him this to help him calm down. We have access to some extremely powerful drugs. They are absolutely in the public, to the public's understanding. They're like carrying a loaded gun. Over a 25-year career, Dr Worth's witnessed the downfall of many co-workers. But four years ago, he himself came close to the edge. I was losing my focus on my job. I was becoming very distracted. I was doubting myself. And I remember at one point really believing in all of my soul that I was absolutely worthless and hopeless and there was nothing to live for. We're humans and um, you know, uh, we aren't immune for any, from any of the ups and downs of life that everybody in the, in the rest of the population uh, has. Former AMA president Mikesh Haikawal says it's no surprise medical practitioners can find it hard to cope. We're trained that you, know, you make a difference and cure people and in fact when you work in the community in general practice um, you make a little difference uh, and actually uh, there's a large number of people that obviously succumb to their illnesses or their old age or what, whatever uh, goes on in their lives and it's hard to deal with. The danger is those medics who do struggle rarely seek professional help for themselves. You okay? We're just trying to find a vein, all right? No pain. We're supermen in our own mind. You know, we've been trained to believe that we are, and I think there's 
a fear that the public are going to judge us if we show fallibility. OK, so we have to make a decision about that. We've yeah, got to do something. The... For some, there's the urge to self-diagnose and self-medicate. Others simply battle on. You're meant to have a sling. Just... Um... Can you give us five more minutes just while all this is hitting the fan? But both coping mechanisms can have dire consequences. There was a study in the US and they found that 20% of doctors working in the hospital would have had clinical depression okay. at any given time. So we're going to get a chest x-ray to see if we can find an obvious cause, all right? And they made six times as many, over six times as many medical errors, prescribing um, errors, medication errors, as non-depressed doctors doing the same jobs. GP turned university lecturer Craig Hassard says it's high time doctors' attitudes change. OK, so just starting off by allowing the eyes to gently close. And he's trying to teach the next generation how to better care for their own mental health. So this is an exercise in helping to train the attention. I think we really need to get beyond the notion that this is just a little bit of warm, fuzzy stuff you tack on at the end of your medical curriculum just to make yourself feel like you're, you know, you're humanising it in some way. And this is actually right up front and centre a core clinical skill. But changing how mental illness is dealt with in the workplace may take some time. We can pull back a curtain in a cubicle of an emergency department, but it seems as doctors and nurses and others that we have a reluctance to treat a colleague the way we would treat a complete stranger. All of this is consolidated and blocked out. So he's probably got a pneumonia, possibly in the presence of some nasty growths in his chest. Your chest X-ray is bad. You've got a large pneumonia on the right. Now, you might have lung cancer. And doctors warn mandatory reporting laws are making the situation even worse. There is a concern uh, which if someone is looking after another doctor uh, for whatever problem they have uh, medically, um, that not only do they have to manage to report it, they could be rubbed off the register. Now seven hours into his shift, Peter Worth has to tell this very ill man there are no treatment options left. You understand that if you get much, much worse, yeah. and the only thing we could do would be to put you on life support, what's your feeling about that? Oh, no. All doctors could do was take away his pain. Within 24 hours, the 83-year-old died. Years ago, Dr Worth would have struggled with the heavy weight of an emotional day like this. But after seeking treatment for his depression, he finds he's not only better able to cope, but is a better doctor for his experience. Now that I'm a bit more empathetic to it, I can recognise not only in patients that might come in, but you can recognise that in colleagues too. So we're very happy now that Sophie doesn't have an intersusception, which is a huge relief and she probably has a gastro. It's a much better outcome for her. It is a very tough job, no question, but it is enormously fulfilling and rewarding. All I would suggest is the system needs to be able to help people when they hit the little speed humps along the way. See ya. Incidentally, if anyone in the wider community feels they need help or further information, they can call Lifeline on 131 114 or contact Beyond Blue. Kirsten Murray with that report.